فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم The next shubha that they bring is establish an Islamic government my brother it is done gradually will say to them that is not the that is not the case and that is a lie and an iftira if we look at the prophet's way and his life one is because the way that the sharia is implemented is gradually if you mean that you're going to take a sharia method if you're taking a sharia legislated matter for instance you have a family member in your household and there's so much haram that they are doing and you say i'm going to divide the things that they are doing into that which is usul and which is basically fundamental issues and then the major which is the kabair and then the sagair and then the things which are i'm going to do that and so i'm going to talk to them about the tawhid and aqidah first and the shirkiyat and then i'm going to move on to ha huh, the kabair that they are doing and then I'm going to had a sahih na'am we're with you on that that is tadarruj but if you're saying that you're going to take anzima gharbiyah you're going to do islam gradually through kufr system and democracy and election we just we believe that that's not the case that's not how it happens and if it was khair and if it was the reality لو كان خيرا لسبقونا إليه. If that was the way, they would have preceded us in it. The next second point is to show you that that's not the case in these gradual stages that you're saying. Give us an example. I'm more like give us a. Breakdown of how you're planning to do this tadarruj. Show us. Let's see it. Let's do it. But it's from the get-go. You're saying democracy is shura. Or you're saying, for instance, that um, election is permissible. Or the sahabas did it. And this. And tomorrow you're going to say to us, the bid and the niqab is, is, is norms and customs. And then after a while, you're going to say the differences between us and the Jews and the Christians is what? It's minor mechanism. Trivial issues. So the truth of the matter is, show us a breakdown of what you mean by it. The reason why we say that is because they don't. They leave the statement like that. We're going to establish that gradually. And they have no plan to do that. It's a way to get the people off them. Another thing is, Many have come before you, who've gone through the system. Have they ever established, through these elections and democracy, have they ever established a government? Have they? Has it happened? In the Muslim world, over 60 years now, democracy has been flowing amongst them. Has anything changed? La kalla. So we say to them, Ya ya ladhina amanu lima taqoolun ma la tafaloon kabura maqtan inda Allahi an taqoolu ma la tafaloon Why do you say to the people that which you're not going to do? The next shubha that they bring is that we don't want to leave the place for the enemies. We don't want to leave the road and the path or the seats. We don't want to let somebody worse to get into position or into power. And we say, we also don't want someone evil to take over our affairs and to make us suffer. We are all together, but we don't believe electing is going to work. No, we don't. We believe the concept which is Aqimu, Dawlat al Islamiyah fi qulubikum tuqam ala ardikum. Establish an Islamic government in your hearts. Let it manifest on your limbs. Let it be seen in your household. And inshallah, the next leader will come out from the household of one of those righteous people, inshallah ta'ala.
But if you don't have a beard, if you are not even praying, if you are slicing cakes with the kuffar, when, it, when they come to these interfaiths, and you say to us that um, we want to, and our plan is to bring about either a dawla islamiyah, or we are planning to what? To push away the lesser of two harms. I'm going to tell you guys something shocking. In Pakistan, in Turkey, in Jordan, in Kuwait, in Egypt and in Yemen, six countries. Are you with me? The Islamiyun, the Muslims, they got the majority in Parliament. Majority, right? So that means they've got the power, right? Wallahi, they have not changed anything. Not one country, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven. So six. Not one or two or three. But six countries, Pakistan, Turkey, Jordan, Kuwait, Misr, Yemen, they all are the, they were the majority at a point. They did not change anything. Rather, guess what they did, you know, brothers? You know what they did? They actually took allegiance with them. They went hand in hand with them. Who brought Abdi Fatah Sisi? Mursi did. He's the one who brought Abdi Fatah Sisi about and gave him this position that he has. And then he just turned the table on him. That is how it was. But as we said, the way to do it is my beloved brothers and sisters. ذلك بأن الله لم يكن مغيرا نعمة أنعمها على قوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم. We need to change our situation for Allah to change our suffering and our pain. My beloved brothers and sisters, the next shubha that they bring forward is we are under duress. كراهة. What's the definition of karaha according to the ulama? Karaha is forcing a person, making a person do something, an action or a speech in which he does not want to do. Are you with me? So there's a person who's forcing you and there's a person who's been forced. So, Pay attention. And the ulama divide the karaha into two. A karaha which is known as al-mulja, which basically means that the person scares you by saying, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. And you and it is what? And what they are saying to you is ha- gonna happen to you. Meaning. There's, there's that belief that it's going to happen. He's going to do it. The second one is Ikra, which is غير Mulja. And basically what it means is that you are threatened that which will not reach you to killing you. Or the person, or the person, is able to kill you, but it won't happen right now. Both of those, both of them, election and democracy doesn't fall about fall of fall under any of them. Why? Who's forcing you? Who? Because as we said, there has to be a mukri and mukra. The one who's been forced and the one who's been forcing, right? Who's doing it to you? Show us. Point it at them. Is it, an organi- is it a mafia group? Who is it? Who's forcing you? There isn't. 
the argument can be the reality is forcing us. And if we say that the reality is forcing you, it doesn't fall into la akbar wa la asar, the two types that we mentioned. The mulja and the ghayru mulja. The reason is because the one who's forcing you is not present, it doesn't exist. And if you are under duress, why is it that you're propagating it? Do it. A person who's under duress doesn't go and tell other people to do it. The one who's under duress doesn't go out and about, make leaflets, make websites, and say to the people, do it. The karah is exclusive to you. The next shubha that they bring is that they say darura, necessity. Nowadays, every haram darura, sah? Why did this darura? Zarkashi, in his Al Mansur fil Qawaid, he says when he defined barura, necessity, he defined it and he said that the barura is a darura is buluguhu haddan, is to reach a limit. In lam yatanawal il mamnu, if he doesn't consume, consume. The prohibited halaka, he become destroyed. Oh, qaraba, oh, he will be close to destruction. In simple terms, it's anything that it's anything that what affects the five baruriyatul khams, the five things that the religion came to protect: your nafs, your honor, your sanity, your wealth, and your religion. If you say it is a darura, then why would you say it's a maslaha? And that's a tanaqud. It's a contradiction. The reason is because there's a difference between a darura and a maslaha. Maslaha is more general. Darura is more specific. Darura is specific to the times of hardship, times of fear of harm. So make your mind up. Are you under a position where you fear destruction, harm of those five that I mentioned? Which is Darura. Because Darura is specific to Khashyat Allah. Any Darar harm that's going to happen to those five. Or evil. So, no. no evil is necessarily going to come. Rather, Maslaha is Hajiyat and Takmilat. So, for you to bring both of them together shows Adam al Tasawur. So you saying it is necessity, right? What do we have to do in a state of necessity? If you're in the middle of the desert and you're going to die, something's in your throat, apparently there's a pint of lager in front of you, you grabbed it, you opened it, and you drank it. I know it sounds very staged. How did it end up there? No, please don't ask those questions. It's a hypothetical scenario. And you opened it, and you had a sip, are you with me? But there was also a there was also a, de a dead pork in front of you. Am I allowed to say that no, I don't want to drink that pint of lager? I might as well eat the pork. Can I do that? Why? The reason is because this we don't know if it's going to remove this. We don't know that. So the barura, the condition for it is that. Sayuzilu barar, that is going to repel and remove the harm and the evil. 
So the question arises is, what has it removed? Election removes what? What harm has it removed from the Muslims? In terms of what, when I say this, in terms of their nafs. What has it removed in terms? Rather, if you look 10 years before, are you with me? As time goes on, things are getting worse. And subhanAllah, more Muslims are actually voting. More Muslims are actually voting and engaging into politics and things are getting worse. In the 90s, brothers, in the 90s, the kind of things that Muslims could do and the kind of lifestyle it was, is it today the same? Voting was not something a Muslim would even think of. They think there was any harm for them. So what I'm saying to you is, the truth of the matter is, it's, 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 I think, actually voting is bringing more harm. The fact that we're politically engaged is bringing us more harm. If we probably take a step back, the government might miss us. And the system, democracy, they might miss us and say, what's happened to the Muslim community? You see, and who would make that happen for us? Allah, Al Muqallib Al Qulub. Allah will toss their heart and turn it for us. Just like when we were not engaged in their politics in the 90s and we were living a good, better life than we are today. InshaAllah Ta'ala, Allah will do that for us. Allah is our one who gives us victory. Allah is the one who protects us. Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Then the next shubha comes into place. Less, less of two evils. We are taking the less of two evils. I say to you, all of the harms that I mentioned and many more that I could have mentioned gives us, gives us an understanding. Are you with me, brothers? that the harms is more in election and democracy. But some of you might want answers still. So I say to you, who is the legislator? Who is legislating in Parliament setting these constitutions, mankind, humans? Not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are the ones who have been given authority and power. That is Shirk Akbar. Or is it Shirk Asghar? Shirk Akbar. What is Shirk Akbar? <coughs> <coughs> that the rights of legislation, the rights of legislation is given, that it's given to them. Shirk Akbar. Why is it Shirk Akbar? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's laws, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's legislations are being dismantled. I now say to you, the one who is saying, I'm taking the less of two evils, why are you not going, why can't you see this evil in front of you? What's blinding you from this seeing this great evil in front of you? The messenger was asked, What's the greatest evil? To make something equal to Allah when He created you. These people have made themselves gods. Allah doesn't forgive a person who falls into shirk akbar. Allah is saying, فَقَدْ ضَلَّ He's become misguided. A clear-cut misguidance. A far misguidance. Far misguidance. And you say, take it, I'm taking the last of two harms. Allah is saying to you, 
of those Muslims who are MPs, who are going and sitting in parliament. Allah says, وَقَدْ نَزَّلَ عَلَيْكُمْ أَنْ إِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ يُكْفَرُ بِهَا وَيُسْتَهْزَأُ بِهَا فَلَا تَقْعُدُوا مَعَهُمْ حَتَّى يَخُوضُوا فِي حَدِيثٍ غَيْرِهِ إِنَّكُمْ إِذَا مِثْلُهُمْ When you're sitting in the house of parliament, they're disbelieving in Allah. They are legislating besides Allah. They're saying that we have the rights. هَذَا حَقُّنَا Allah says to the believers, فَلَا تَقْعُدُوا مَعَهُمْ Don't say with these people. Until they repent from what they are upon. Until they come back to their senses. Allah is telling us, leave these people alone. And you want the Muslims to all go and to participate. The last and final shubha that they throw is that ulama afadil, noble, great scholars such as muhaddith al-asr, fadilatul shaykh, al-albani rahimahullah, samahatul mufti al-aam, Muhammad Nasir al-Aziz ibn Abdullah ibn Baz, Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymin, all of these scholars, they gave a verdict in its permissibility. Allahu Akbar. Brother, who are you to talk about it now? قُضِي الْأَمْرُ الَّذِي فِيهِ تَسْتَفْتِيَانِ Three giants, three noble ulama have already spoken about it and they've given permissibility, they gave the, they gave the green lights. We say to those people who say that, why is it that when Sheikh Abdaziz ibn Baz gave the verdict that the American troops could come into the Arabian Peninsula and he gave that fatwa and so the Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymin gave it with him. Why is it that it didn't suffice you? Why did you choose not to take it? Rather, you may say Al-Bari, so I took Al-Bari's opinion. What about when three of them all agreed that the Muslims in Palestine have to find and do a sulh treaty and a contract with what? The Jews in Palestine. Why did, it, why did you guys get so angry? Why did you send your little kids to the pulpits and say that Ibn Baz doesn't know what he's talking about. And, and these ulama are living in another kokab. And they live in another world. They don't know our reality. And you insulted them. And this is written and it's here. And it's known. Ya ikhwa, the truth of the matter is that the statement of the scholars are based on what? Hawa. They don't take it from these ulama. <coughs> It happened that Ibn Baz ibn Uthaymin al albani was in accordance to their there. They already believed something. They already take, took a stance. And apparently, Ibn Uthaymin and Ibn Baz al albani their understanding and their knowledge and their piety and their love of this deen and the Muslims to be honoured took them to this conclusion. As for Ha'ulai, these ones, they were not doing it because they were in what? in accordance to Sheikh Ibn Baz, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin, Sheikh Al-Albani. Well, and I don't say that everybody's like that. There are some people who are with these ulama through every issue and they say, I am a muqallid, I don't know anything. So I just take what the ulama say. And that person, we don't blame him. Except when the evidence comes to you, you have to follow the evidence. Because this issue is something other scholars have taken and stances which they took. Ibn Baz alayhi rahmatullahi and Muhammad ibn Salih Uthaymeen and Sheikh Muhammad Nasr al-Din al-Bani all were against cult and groups. They prohibited that and they all believed that democracy and what? And elections have come to us from the our enemies of Islam. Why is it that you don't take that from them? Why is it that you don't take that from them? And always will ask this question. Say to them, say to them this particular question. When do you choose to take Ibn Baz and Ibn Uthaymin and Al-Albani? Ask the simple question. When do you guys come and take Ibn Baz, Ibn Uthaymin and Al-Albani? They don't know. Basically, what it is, is إِذَا وَافَقَ الْهَوَى If it's in accordance to my desires, 
my brothers, Sheikh Ibn Baz, he prohibited Hezbiya. And Ibn Baz clearly said, Ikhwan al-Muslimin are, are from the, the Firqa to Nariya. That they're from the group that's going to go into the hellfire. Fatwa Musajjala is there. 